Hey, it's Tim K5OHY. I'm here at Big Bend National Park, and right behind me you can see Santa Elena Canyon. Uh, my wife is actually down there hiking with a friend, and I thought I would drive up to the overlook and see if I can make some contacts. My last video was on the 66-foot doublet, and I took it out to a park and did a QRP activation. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I made a lot of contacts, and the antenna worked fantastic. Um, but I've actually used a doublet before, and I've used this one. This is a NorCal doublet. And I built this when I bought my KX2. I wanted a really good multi-band antenna that I could use with the tuner in the KX2. And so I came across the NorCal doublet. And what this antenna is, is it's a doublet made out of ribbon wire. And uh, basically it's a four wire ribbon wire that you can get really cheap. And you basically strip two, the outer two sections of the wire off, 22 feet on each side. And you tie a special knot called an electrician's knot. And what that does is prevent the cable from coming apart any further. This is an antenna that's been around a while and it's kind of a variation on a lamp cord or a zip line dipole. In fact, I found an article, uh, it was 1979, I believe, um, where they talk about using lamp cord as not only the feed line, but the antenna. And it makes for a very simple, quick antenna build. However, uh, the problem is I've had mixed results with this antenna. And now that I know a little bit more about antennas than I did a year ago, I kind of understand why. And it's really for two reasons. First of all, uh, when I deployed this antenna, um, occasionally I would have it very low. Uh, the center would be up about 20 feet. The ends would just be a few feet off the ground. And so very low for a dipole or doublet. So what that does is basically creates a cloud warmer. It's an Invis style antenna. There's a huge difference between having an antenna a quarter wave high or a doublet or a dipole is what I'm talking about. Having it a quarter wave high or having it a half wave high. And obviously the higher you get it, the better it's gonna be um, up to a point. But if you can get a dipole up a half wavelength, you're gonna get a lot more gain and low angle takeoff. The times this has worked really well for me is when I put it up about 30 feet in the middle and had the ends, you know, 20 feet and it worked pretty well. But I also ran a little bit more power that time. The other reason this antenna does not work as well as a regular doublet is we're using this ribbon line as the feed line. And this is not as good as 450 ohm ladder line. In fact, it's probably a lot worse. I'm not sure how many ohms this, this line is. You know, I, I from what I read, they're, they're guessing maybe 100 ohms. In fact, in the article in QST from 1979 about zip line antennas, they did a bunch of tests and they found that the um, lamp cord was about 100 ohms and it was quite lossy, especially when the SWR climbed. This uh, has, uh, you know, the two middle wires still in it, so that probably has an effect too. I don't know what that would be, but it, it's probably not the most efficient antenna. But with that said, I thought it would be kind of fun to try it out again, and I'm going to try to get it as high as possible. So a little bit more about the NorCal doublet. This is a document that goes over the antenna and how to build it, and I'll link this in the description. But as you can see here, it's a very simple antenna with a base of a 44 foot doublet, 22 feet on each side. And then using ribbon wire or ribbon cable as the transmission line and the radiating elements. Um, and this document goes into how they build it. Um, he uses a zip tie instead of the electrician's knot, but either one will work. The 44 foot doublet is recommended by LB Seabick in this article. And I, I talk about this in the last video, so I'm not gonna go really into depth. But he said if he could only have one wire antenna, he would start with a 40 meter dipole. You can see here at 66 foot of height, you get really good gain and decent takeoff angles from 40 meters to 10 meters. But here's the problem. The radiation patterns become kind of erratic on the upper bands because once the antenna gets longer than 1.25 wavelength, you're gonna get more lobes and you're gonna get these deep knolls broadside to the antenna. So it's not the most reliable radiation pattern. So he came up with the 44 foot doublet and recommends that from 40 meters to 10 meters. So as you can see, you still get really good gain. You lose slight amount of gain from 40 meters to 17 meters, but you actually get more gain from 15 meters to 10 meters. In fact, on 12 meters and 10 meters, you can see 
that it's an extended double zep and you get really good gain, really low takeoff angles. But the real advantage here is the radiation patterns are very reliable. It's all broadside on every band from 40 meters to 10 meters. So starting with a 44 foot doublet is a great idea, but the problem is the transmission line on this antenna. This is the article that I talked about earlier. It's from QST March of 1979. And they talk about making a dipole with zip cord or lamp cord. It's kind of interesting. You can see that uh, it was six cents a foot back in 1979. What's funny is you can buy very similar wire, like speaker wire, for less than 10 cents a foot, which is kind of interesting 46 years later. So this article uh, talks about making a dipole with this zip cord, and you can see the electrician's knot. But they, they do quite a bit of testing and come up that this is a 105 ohm transmission line, and the loss is a feature of not only the length of transmission line, but the SWR and the frequency. As the SWR climbs and as the frequency rises, you're going to have quite a bit of loss. This is a newer article that can be found in the ARRL antenna book, and I believe it's in chapter 19. And this is from March of 2009. And they talk about making a very similar dipole out of the same type of wire. And they come up with the same conclusion, that this antenna has quite a bit of loss on the transmission line, but it may be acceptable if you're okay with that loss. Back to the NorCal doublet. This uses a slightly different transmission line, which actually might be quite a bit worse. And I'm not really smart enough to know exactly how much loss is on this cable, but I think it's gonna be quite significant. First of all, between the two outer wires that we're using for the transmission line, you've got a lot of this PVC insulation, and then you've got these two wires in the center. And I'm assuming that that's gonna have quite a bit of effect on the efficiency of this transmission line. The two center wires probably have some capacitive coupling or some effect that's gonna be worse than 450 ohm ladder line. So while this antenna has a really good basic design around a 44 foot doublet, the transmission line is the problem. And for an antenna that's mostly designed for QRP work, I think it's probably not the best antenna because you're gonna have very high losses. So I just finished my activation with the NorCal doublet and I kind of came up with the same conclusion that I had beforehand. It's an okay antenna. Uh, I made contacts on the four bands that I work, 10 meters through 17 meters. I made 61 contacts in around an hour. The signal reports were decent. Nothing was, was outstanding. I got a little bit of DX too. Three stations in France, uh, one in Spain and one in Switzerland and one in England. So I can't really complain about that. But um, I was running 75 watts and you know, honestly, I felt like the the 66 foot doublet QRP was better uh, than running 75 watts into the NorCal doublet. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are using the NorCal doublet for QRP. And honestly, I think with, with what I know now, with how much loss is on the transmission line, um, I probably would not run a NorCal doublet. I would... If I wanted to run a doublet, I would run an actual 44 foot doublet with either 300 ohm or 450 ladder line. I think that's gonna be a much better antenna. You know, if I had to pick between the NorCal doublet and just a simple vertical, I'll pick the vertical because I think they uh, work just as well and are way easier to set up. You know, uh, setting up the, the NorCal doublet was uh, not really fun. It got real windy on me and this is not the best place to set one up. So I kind of had to, you know, make do with, with suboptimal deployment of this antenna. But I did get the ends up at least, uh, probably at least 20 feet. Like I said, the, the NorCal doublet, it works. You're going to make contacts, but I think there are a lot better antennas. I think there's just too much loss on it. But if you do get it up, it, you, you're going to make contacts. Um, it worked a lot better uh, at 30 feet than it's worked at 20 feet for me. So anyway, this was a fun experiment. I uh, hope to see you on the air, 73.